Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church. I welcome you to our video service for Sunday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day to all you romantics out there. And happy Valentine's to my own dear wife, Joy. My sermon for this morning is the bread of life from John chapter 6, the bread of life. And I have two songs to sing with you, Waymaker by Osunaki Okoro and In Christ Alone by Keith Getty and Stuart Townsend. Work, promise, keep, 
light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here touching every life. I worship you. I worship you. You are here meeting every need. I worship you. Make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I welcome you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 6, and we'll begin to read at verse 34. I will speak from the whole of verses uh, 34 to uh, 42, but uh, to begin with, we'll read just verses 34 and 35. John chapter 6, and beginning to read at verse 34. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Father God, I thank you for these uh, words of Scripture. And I thank you for these words from your Son, Christ Jesus. And uh, these words from uh, the living bread of life. Father, I pray that as we recall these words of Christ, that uh, you will speak to us by your Holy Spirit, and you will call us to uh, eat and drink from the bread of life so that we might uh, receive the life and grace of the ever-living bread. And so I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Hebrew and scriptural name for God is represented by the alphabetic characters Yod He Vav He, or in English, Y H W H. Jewish people do not speak this name out of reverence and care not to misuse it. Not even when they read from the scriptures. They commonly substitute the Hebrew name Adonai, which means Lord or Master. And the Septuagint, or Greek Old Testament, similarly replaces or translates the Hebrew name for God with kurios, which also means Lord or Master. And for this reason, our own English translations of the Bible also render the Hebrew name for God with Lord. But the true meaning of the four consonant Hebrew words is, I am. And we know this from the declaration by God himself about his own name in Exodus 3.14. I am who I am. In the Gospel of John, 
Seven declarations by Jesus begin with the hallowed Hebrew name for God. I am the light of the world. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd, the gate for the sheep, the way, the truth, and the life, and the true vine. And here in John chapter 6, we hear the heavenly I am declaring about himself, I am the bread of life. In verse 34, the crowd of Galilean people whom Jesus has fed miraculously and who have heard him speak about the bread from heaven now urge him, Sir, from now on, give us this bread. Verses 1 to 14 of this chapter recount that Jesus has marvelously fed 5,000 men and their wives and children with just five small barley loaves and two small fish. The day after this miracle, these people have followed Jesus and his disciples across the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum. And there the master has begun to tell them about the food that endures to eternal life and the bread who comes down from heaven. So now, the anxious throng of miraculously fed people plead with Jesus to give them more food. Sir, from now on, give us this bread. They excitedly hope that the miracle worker will continue supplying them in the same way Moses has provided the Israelites in the wilderness, the heavenly bread called manna. Despite all Jesus has told them, the people still do not understand that the heavenly bread he is speaking about is himself. So in verse 35, the master answers the plea of the crowd with the emphatically clear declaration. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the bread of life is one of the seven statements throughout the Gospel of John that begins with the scriptural name for God, I am. Spoken by Jesus about himself, these declarations that begin with the name of God represent the veiled but sure claim of Jesus to be God or divine also. And here the statement, I am the bread of life, is a declaration that Jesus himself is the living bread who has come from heaven and who is able to give eternal life to the world. Only the ever-living I am and almighty life giver is able to give eternal life. And the I am named Jesus now promises that whoever comes to him in faith will never go hungry, but will eat forever from the ever-living bread of life and will drink forever the water of eternal life. But Jesus sadly understands that most of the people listening to him will not believe his claim to be the bread of life. And so he reminds them in verse 36, But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. The Galileans have seen the miracle of the feeding of 5,000. But they have not seen what it signifies. Now, Jesus is telling them plainly that he himself is the bread of life. And still, these people do not believe in him. But this unbelief does not surprise or worry the Savior, 
because as he says in verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Belief in the one and only Son of God finally depends on the work of the Heavenly Father to lead people to Christ and to reveal to them that He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, as the Father has revealed to Peter and the other disciples. And whoever comes to the Son in faith, Jesus will certainly not drive away or refuse. Rather, the Savior will welcome the believing soul as one of his very own. For I have come down from heaven, Jesus says in verses 38 and 39, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. Jesus has not come to please the crowd and to satisfy its demand for more signs and more food. Rather, he has come like a servant to do the will of God. And that almighty purpose is that not one of those who have believed in the heavenly Son will perish or be lost to him through death. Instead, God has ordained that they should live forever. And so the almighty Father will raise from the dead all those who belong to Christ at the last day and in the final resurrection of all the righteous saints. For my Father's will, Jesus says in verse 40, is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is how God has chosen to save his people, through his only heavenly Son, Jesus. God will finally raise from the dead everyone who looks to the Savior in faith and who believes Jesus is the heavenly Son whom God has sent into the world for salvation. And does this marvelous offer of eternal life from the Savior Jesus immediately win him converts? Sadly, no. At these statements by Jesus, verse 41 recounts, the Jewish people listening to him grumble about him because he is saying about himself, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Rather than believing in Jesus and welcoming the eternal life he offers them, they take offense to his claim that he is from heaven. In verse 42, they say about him, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? The people suppose they know who Jesus is, because they know the parents he has been born to. And Jesus' fellow Jews doubt he has come from heaven any more than they or any other earth-born men are from heaven. <clears throat> Bread from heaven. Christ Jesus is the food that God has sent into the world to feed human souls so they will not die forever but live. And every man or woman who is willing to believe in the living bread of life will receive nourishment that will sustain them for eternity. So why would we want any other sort of food? Why should we worry ourselves about what we will eat and what we will drink? 
Why should we busy ourselves all day and every day for the sort of bread that will only sustain us for a while and cannot keep us from dying? Sir, the Galilean crowd following Jesus said to the Savior, from now on, give us this bread. But they did not mean the bread of life. They were not pleading for the food that lasts for eternity. Rather, they wanted bread like Jesus had miraculously made for them. They wanted manna like Moses gave the Israelites. So what sort of bread do you and I hunger for? Do we only care about the food and drink that satisfies our natural hunger and thirst? Or do we take care to feed our souls and nurture our spirits? Do we take time for church, assembling ourselves online or in person? Do we strengthen our inner selves through weekly worship? Do we dine daily on the scriptural words of life? You are what you eat, you know. So what do you feed yourself? I am the bread of life, Jesus said invitingly about himself. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Never be thirsty. Never go hungry. Is this not the food that we should dearly desire and happily welcome? The ever-living and almighty I am has become human bread. The heavenly and immortal Son of God has become a living drink. And whoever drinks from the Son and eats from the I am bread will receive unfailing nourishment. Whoever believes in the Savior Jesus will live forever and enjoy resurrection immortality. Sadly, however, the bread of life is not what many souls hunger for. Christ Jesus is not whom they are willing to put their trust in. And so they are like the Galileans who thronged after the Savior and to whom he said, But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. After seeing the living bread of life with their own eyes, and after eating the food he had miraculously made for them, the thousands of well-fed souls would not believe in the Savior and heavenly Son of God. <clears throat> and why was that? Why such unbelief when they had received such an amazing revelation? Because all that the Father gives me will come to me, Jesus explained. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. The Heavenly Father knows which souls are ready to believe in the Son. And the Holy Spirit speaks within their hearts and minds and draws them to the Savior. For as Jesus said about himself, I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And the Father who has sent the Son also sends his Spirit to accomplish the will of the Almighty for all those who hunger for salvation. So you and I who have already believed and who dearly long to see our family, friends, and neighbors believe also, we can take assurance from the confidence of Christ himself 
that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are all working to bring our loved ones into salvation. And this is the will of him who sent me. Jesus has declared about all those who will believe in him, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day, the last day of this perishing old world, the last day of judgment for those who have refused the grace of God, but salvation for those who have believed in the heavenly Son. And the last day of dying, suffering, and grieving, and the beginning of resurrection, immortality. And for this more than wonderful hope, we have the assurance from the resurrection and life himself. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is the will of the Almighty and ever-living I Am. This is the infallible purpose of the Maker and Sustainer of the earth, the heavens, and the whole universe. To save for all eternity, you and I who have believed in the Son Christ Jesus, and to resurrect us with him on the last day. Praise the almighty and all-loving God. But what did Jesus' own fellow Jews and Israelite kinfolk do when he announced this glorious salvation to them? They grumbled against him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They knew him as one of their own and knew his parents, Joseph and Mary. And they doubted that someone like them could be from heaven like Jesus claimed about himself. So what about you? Do you suppose you know Jesus too well to believe he is the heavenly Son of God? Have you heard the story of his birth to Joseph and Mary too often to consider that it was a heaven-sent miracle? Do you not hunger for life beyond your inevitable death? Are you willing to believe in the ever-living bread of life? One of the valuable lessons we have learned from this present COVID-19 pandemic is the value of a human life. Why do we carefully observe the current health safety restrictions? Why do we close our businesses? Why do we keep to our own households? Why do we limit our travel? Why do we refrain from coming to church? To save lives. To prevent the spread of the disease and keep our elderly and vulnerable from contracting the virus. To safeguard the lives of our moms and dads, our uncles and aunts, and our brothers and sisters. To keep our hospitals and intensive care units from being overwhelmed with patients. To enable our doctors and nurses to care for every victim readily and neglect none, and to enable them to treat all patients with all sorts of conditions, because all lives matter. Nearly every day, 
we hear our chief medical officer, Dr. Dina Hinshaw, announce the number of deaths due to COVID illness. And she takes time to speak about them and offers her thoughtful sympathies to the bereaved families. Again, because every one of these lives matter and they will be sorrowfully missed by their loved ones. Since these human lives matter, and they surely do, should not the immortal bread of life dearly matter to us also? Should not the ever-living I am, who is able to feed and sustain us for all eternity, be our first concern? Should not the resurrection and life, who is able to raise us and our loved ones from the dead, be our greatest hope? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Christ Jesus. We thank you for the ever-living bread of life. And we thank you that by eating and drinking from the bread of life, we can have eternal life ourselves. We thank you for this great salvation. We thank you for this great Savior. And Father, I pray for anyone watching this video that they would say yes to your Son and our Savior that they would eat from the living bread of life and they would receive his grace, his life, and his salvation and that you will raise us all up at the last day according to your almighty purpose, Father God. And Father, I do pray for grace and life and healing. I pray for our elderly and our vulnerable, that you will protect them and you will preserve their lives. I pray for those who are in hospital and in intensive care units. I pray that you'll restore them and you will raise them up and you will grant grace and protection to our health care workers also. And Father, I pray for the soon arrival of uh, vaccines that uh, will cure us of this virus and uh, prevent the spread of uh, it, Lord, and that uh, will enable us to soon return to our lives, our businesses, our livelihoods, our jobs, and resume the, uh, Lord, the good and abundant life that you desire your people to live. Father, I pray you're, in your grace and mercy you will do this for us. I pray this in the mighty and the matchless name of our Savior Christ Jesus. Amen.
here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was set. For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost his grip on me, for I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ to stand no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand 